Hello Dracolo here, welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! 101, a series in which I go over the rules of the game and explain them. In this episode, I'll be going over the basics, like the preparations for the duel, the turn instruction, etc. Therefore, without further ado, let's get started. In order to start the game, you need some items. Some are essential, some might just help. Let's start with the thing you need. And here's the list of items that you might need but aren't essential. Like the main deck, which is a set of 40 to 60 cards to use for the entire duel. The extra deck is a set of up to 15 cards that consists of Xyz, Synchro, Fusion and Link monsters in any combination. The side deck also consists of up to 15 cards. You can exchange the content of your side deck with your main or extra deck in order to to change your tactic during a match. You can also do those changes in between duels. An important thing to remember when building your deck is the rule of three. It states that you cannot have more than three cards with the same name in your main deck, side deck and extra deck. The Forbidden Limited list is updated by Konami and is available on their website. It lists cards that have to be played in lower amounts than three, therefore it overrules the rule of three mentioned previously. There are the following types of restrictions. Forbidden. You cannot play this card in your main deck, side deck or extra deck. Limited. You can only use one copy of this card in your main deck, side deck or extra deck. And semi-limited, which makes it so you can use up to two copies of this card in your main deck, side deck or extra deck. Before going to any tournament, always check the current forbidden and limited list so that you are allowed to play competitively. Coins, dice, and counters, since some cards use those as a part of their effects. When it comes to the dice, you should have a standard D6. Tokens are used to represent monsters created by card effects. Anything can be used for a token, actually. The only thing required is for it to have two distinct ways of placement to indicate battle position. In the recent years, Konami has been printing actual token cards. Life points change during the duel. Some calculations might be hard to do on paper, therefore it's much easier to do those using a calculator. Also, please remember to always track your life points on paper to avoid any additional errors. Sleeves protect your cards from damage. When used, all of them should be the same color and unmarked. This is how the entire field looks like. It's divided into two sections, one for each player. Now, let's get through each zone separately. This is the extra monster zone. This is the zone where you place monsters summoned from the extra deck. Under normal circumstances, each player can only control one extra monster zone. Those are the main monster zones. You can play monsters in there. You can have up to five monsters in those zones at a time. Those are your spell and trap zones. You can play your back row in there, spells and traps. The far left and the far right zones can also be considered pendulum zones. More on that later. This is a graveyard. When a card is removed from the field, you place it in this zone, unless a card effect states otherwise. The content of the graveyard is public knowledge and both you and your opponent can look through it at any point of the duel. The order of the cards in the graveyard cannot be changed. The deck zone, as the name implies, is a zone when you place your main deck. It's placed face down. Should a card or effect require you to look through it, add a card from it to your hand, remember to always shuffle it and place it back face down in this zone. In the field zone, you place your field spells. More about those a bit later. Cards in this zone do not count as being in the spell and trap zone. There are three types of cards in the game, those are monsters, spells and traps. Let's look at the one you'll be using the most in your deck, and that is... This is the monster's name, it's important for the rule of three mentioned previously. The number of stars determine the monster's level. It's important for various summons, so I'll go over it in more detail in the next episode. This is the monster's attribute and type. Some card effects include those, so it's important to take note of them. Those are the monster's attack and defense stats in battle. The higher the points, the stronger the monster is. Here is where the monster's text is placed. For the effect monsters is their effect, for normal monsters is a flavor text that explores the monster's lore. When it comes to monster types, those include normal monsters recognizable by the yellow card border, effect monsters with the orange card border, blue ritual monsters, those are placed in the main deck, and can be special summoned using a ritual spell, violet fusion monsters which are placed in the extra deck, white synchro monsters also placed in the extra deck, black Xyz monsters also placed in the extra deck, please note they don't have levels, they have ranks indicated by the black stars on the card, and also blue link monsters. Those are differentiated from the ritual monsters by the hexagonal shapes on the card border. Pendulum monsters are half monster, half spell. They're treated as a monster pretty much everyone on the 
field unless you play them in the pendulum zone, where they're treated as a spell, and allow the player access to pendulum summoning. I don't want to go into too much detail regarding summoning, since we'd be here for another hour or two. It'll be all explained in the next episode. Three types of position a monster on the field can be in. Either it's attack position, which is always face up and upright, or defense position, which can be either face up or face down. The card is always placed sideways. Spells can be distinguished by the green border and the spell icon in the upper right corner. Unless stated otherwise, spells can only be activated during your main phase. In order to use those, announce the activation to the opponent, place them face up on the field, and send them to the graveyard once the effect resolves. There are six types of spells in the game. Normal spells, recognized by the blank space under the spell icon, are mostly single-use cards. This icon indicates a quick play spell. Those cards are special since you can activate them from your hand, during any phase of your turn. They can also be activated during your opponent's turn once you set them face down in the spell and trap zone, but they cannot be activated on the same turn that you set them. This helps you recognize ritual spells. Those are used to perform ritual summons. More on that in the next episode. This is used to recognize a continuous spell. Those cards remain on the field once activated and their effects can be applied permanently while face up. Equipped spells are recognized by this icon. Those cards give the equipped monster additional effects. They remain in the spell and trap zone after activation. If the equipped monster is removed from the field or flipped face down, the cards equipped to it are destroyed. Field spells are recognized by this icon. They are placed in the field zone and each player can only control one field spell. Trap cards have a purple border and a trap icon in the upper right corner. In order to activate a trap card, you have to first set it face down in your spell and trap zone, declare the activation of a trap, flip the card face up, and send it to the graveyard once the effect results. Traps cannot be activated the turn they are set unless a card states otherwise. There are three types of trap cards in the game. Normal traps, which are distinguished by a blank space under the trap icon, they're pretty much a trap equivalent of a normal spell. This icon indicates a continuous trap, a trap equivalent of a continuous spell. This icon indicates a counter trap. Those are usually activated in response to an action. Like in every game, there are two possible outcomes to a duel. Either someone wins or a draw is declared. Now I'll go over the possible win conditions that you want to achieve in order to win. Each player starts with 8000 life points and the winner is declared when one of the players loses all of them. This is the most common win condition. If a player is unable to draw a card from their deck, they lose the duel. Please note that even if you don't have any cards in your deck, you can still play until you have to draw a card. There exist special cards that allow you to to win the duel automatically, should you meet the required condition. When both players are able to reach a win condition at the same time, the duel is declared a draw. Each turn is structured into phases. You have to go over each one of those in order to end your turn. They are draw phase, in which the turn's player draws one card from the top of their main deck. After a card is drawn, traps or quick play spells can be activated. This phase is skipped by the starting player during their first turn. Some cards have effect that activate or cause you must pay in the standby phase. If you don't have any of those cards on the field, you can still activate trap cards or quick play spell cards before moving to your main phase one. Your main phase one is the phase in which you play most of your cards. I'll go over the details a bit later. The battle phase is a phase in which battling between monsters occurs. It's divided into steps and it's skipped by the starting player on their first turn. You can only enter main phase 2 once you have conducted your battle phase. It's pretty much a repeat of your main phase 1. You can do all the actions you did not do on your main phase 1. In the end phase you resolve all the effects that state during the end phase in their text or applied until the end of the turn. Should you have more than 6 cards in your hand you discard cards to the graveyard until you have 6 in your hand. Since there's a number of actions you can do in the, your main phase, it definitely needs a separate paragraph. In it, you can summon monsters. You have to know that there's no limit when it comes to special summons, and you can do it how many times you want during your turn. However, each turn you can normal summon or 
normal set only once. When it comes to normal summoning, there's a level restriction as well, and it goes as follows. When it comes to level 4 or below monsters, those can be normal summoned without any problem, you just place them on the field. When it comes to level 5 or level 6 monsters, those monsters need you to tribute one monster you already have on the field by sending it to the graveyard. When it comes to level 7 and above monsters, you have to tribute two monsters you already have on the field in order to normal summon them. You always normal summon a monster in a face up attack position or normal set it in a face down defense position. You can only change the battle position of a monster once per turn. There are two additional restrictions regarding this. One, that when a monster was already summoned this turn, you cannot just change its battle position. Also, when a monster already attacked, you cannot change its position during main phase 2. Cards and effects and set spells and traps in your spell and trap zone as much as you'd like. The nuances of the battle phase also need a separate paragraph. Let's start with how the phase is structured. Like mentioned previously, it's divided into steps, and those are the start step, which starts the battle phase. The turn player should clearly declare entering the battle phase. The battle step, which occurs when you have chosen monsters on both sides of a field that will battle. The damage step, in which you calculate the damage dealt, if there is any. Once it ends, you re-enter the battle step. And the end step, which occurs when the end of the battle phase, and it when, which occurs when the end of the battle phase is announced. An important thing to remember during the battle phase is the replay. It occurs during the battle step after the turn player has declared an attack and the amount of monsters on the opponent's side of the field changed. Should the turn player choose not to redeclare the attack, the monster is considered to already have declared an attack and cannot attack again this turn. There are three situations when it comes to dealing damage. When the attacking monster's attack is greater than the opponent's monster, the difference is dealt to the opponent as damage. After that, the opponent's monster is destroyed and sent to the graveyard. When the attack of both monsters is the same, both are destroyed and sent to the graveyard. No damage is dealt. When the attacking monster's attack is lower than the opponent's monster, the difference is dealt to the turn player as damage. The attacking monster is destroyed and sent to the graveyard. When the attacking monster's attack is greater than the opponent's monster's defense, the losing monster is destroyed and sent to the graveyard. No damage is dealt. When the attacking monster's attack is equal to the opponent's monster's defense, no monster is destroyed and and no damage is dealt. When the attacking monster's attack is lower than the opponent's monster's defense, the difference is dealt to the turn's player as damage. No monster is destroyed. Holy cow, that was a doozy. I was actually kind of scared of the size of the script when I first finished writing it, and it's shown in the time I, it took me to do the entire recording, about 7 hours. Well, since it's all done, I hope you like this video. If you do, please leave a comment or a like. I left the link to all my sources for this down below. Bye bye!